Coming in at number 10, we have got the Giants Gaming Squad. And if you haven't paid attention, the squad that uh, came up through Challenger is totally different now. Four of the five are not on the team anymore. Only Ruin remains in that top lane. And on first impressions, this roster doesn't look super solid. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Steelback on this team to carry a lot of these games. I mean, a guy like Betsy has been in the league for a while, but hasn't really showcased that main carry potential. Steelback has been the featured carry on eh, his last couple rosters, really. He's been the guy that's looked to take over games and been the sole carry in a lot of these games. I just don't see him being able to do that against some of these other EU squads coming in. And really, there's not much synergy on this squad. There's a couple of guys like Joko and Steelback who have played together uh, last split. But I mean, outside of that, there's not a whole lot of synergy going on with that squad. So I, I'd be hard pressed to see them competing with a lot of these other squads coming into the East EU LCS this split because, I mean, synergy is going to be a key with a lot of these teams. But, I mean, every roster has made at least one change. So maybe it won't be as important, but I mean, just going on a purely talent basis, this team is probably going to be hanging out in the bottom three. I think they'll probably be the bottom squad heading into 2018 spring split. Uh, let's move on. Number nine, we're going right through all these playoff teams rather quickly. So number nine, we have got Rawcat. Uh, they're coming in and you've got a couple guys from NIP on there, Profit and HeQ. And obviously, the Ninjas in Pajamas were pretty terrible last split, but these were the two standout performers on that squad. Now, is that going to be enough to translate to a lot of wins for these guys? Eh, probably not. You've also got Norskrin there as support, who's a pretty hyped up guy. I was kind of excited to see him on maybe a better roster in 2018, but he's going to be hanging out on Rocket. And uh, yeah, we're talking about Profit and HeQ. They, again, were the standout players on NIP, but I just... Again, that's not enough, I don't think, to keep up with some of these other EU rosters and particularly that 80 carry role. There are a lot of talented guys, whether it's veterans or some of these younger guys uh, coming up. I just, I, I don't see HeQ being able to keep up with some of these bottom lanes. Even with Zven and Mithy leaving EU, uh, I think the bottom lane is going to be one of the most competitive lanes uh, going forward in the EU LCS in 2018. And HeQ and Norskarin, uh, they're going to be hard-pressed to keep up with a lot of these guys. But I mean, the organization, Rockat, they have a, it seems to be a fantastic backing and organization, coaching staff going forward. It's just, what are they going to be able to do with this roster? A guy like, a guy like Blanc, who subbed in for G2 last but he looked fantastic. He had some of the best KDAs in like, Two games played, and those G2 subs did uh, win a couple of games for G2, but this is, uh, this is not as quite a supportive team around him as he had on G2. With someone like Sven and Mithy in the bottom lane, it's going to be a pretty big drop-off. Uh, guy I haven't talked about, Memento, who had flashes of pretty stellar play, definitely above average in uh, recent years in the LCS, so maybe that's a guy who really performs super well, and maybe Rocket finishes a little higher than that nine spot, but I, I don't really see Rocket competing for a playoff spot in 2018 spring. Let's go on to number eight, because it's just so great. Uh, coming at number eight, we've got the Unicorns of Love, who lost the two pillars of that organization in Vizichachi and Hillisang. They still have Sheepy as coach, but it's a very different looking roster. Only Exile and Samix remain from last split. Cold is obviously trashy. He overwent the old name change in the offseason. Uh, the main thing going into this split is going to be the play of exile for UOL because in summer he was not good. Not good. He was very questionable. He just was constantly disrespecting uh, opposing teams junglers and some of the other players getting caught out a lot and having a lot of deaths they need him to get back to Spring Split Exile, who was one of the top up-and-coming mid laners. And he, he looked fantastic, and that's one of the reasons that UOL got to the uh, EU LCS Finals in 2017 Spring. But he looked like a totally different player in summer. So if Exile can get back to the performance that he put on in Spring, then you know what? UOL probably finishes higher than the number 8 spot. Uh, but I'm just... I don't know if he'll be able to do that. I mean, his, he hasn't had a super long career, so it's kind of hard to say what 
kind of player he actually is because we just haven't seen that much out of him. But uh, if he's not able to get back to that, then the Unicorns are probably going to struggle. I mean, a guy like Trashy is kind of... He's going to be a mid-tier jungler for them, most likely. Obviously, Samix was fantastic and an MVP candidate last year. We'll see how he does with uh, imported support in Totoro. Uh, we'll see what the communications issues are like with them going forward. But I got Unicorns coming in at number eight. Let's go on. We've got number seven. This is the last spot. Not making it into the playoffs, but, uh, you know, it, it'll be tight for them. And they'll be battling for that final playoff spot. It is Vitality. Um, this roster took a long time to be announced. Yamato Cannon, head coach, kind of had said there was a lot of hype coming into this team. And you see it, and it's just four-fifths of Giants. Uh, now, that Giants squad did look pretty solid. A guy like Mini Troopax has a lot of hype and is going to be another potentially star 80 carry for this squad. Cabo Shard, the only remaining member from last year's Vitality squad. So that's going to be a big veteran presence for them. But I mean, a lot of these guys on Giants, Gilius, another veteran, um, that's a lot of synergy you've got instantly with this squad, with four-fifths of the team. That's tied for time. Fanatic, excuse me, for the uh, most familiar lineup from last split. So we'll see if that synergy comes into play. Maybe they get out to some early wins in this split while other teams are kind of still de dealing with some chemistry issues. But I mean, a guy like Jazuki and Mini Troopax, Look to those guys. Those might be some featured 80 carries. And Mini, I think, is definitely going to be one of these potentially star 80 carries coming up. Him along with Upset, who we'll get to later on in these rankings. But I think those, both those guys are going to be up and coming 80 carries. And Vitality, I think they could potentially get that last playoff spot. Uh, but it's going, to be, it's going to be a hard fought battle between them and the sixth place team, who we'll get to in just a minute. Uh, but Vitality... I mean, they've got a good coach in Yamato Cannon. Uh, he's very well-spoken, very seductive voice, which is something you always want to have with your coach. But um, I'm just not sure that the, the full talent is there to, again, compete with some of these upper EU LCS teams. Because as ridiculous as the NA LCS was, and yeah, a lot of the key EU guys are, were leaving to go to NA, some of these EU rosters still look very solid. And I think overall this is going to be a much more competitive EU LCS than it was in 2017. So even making the playoffs is going to be a uh, tough spot for a lot of these teams. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more esports content.